That's what Paul said. You going in that water is like being buried and you coming out, you shall walk in newness of life. From then on, you're not serving sin. This, is, this was already written back here, though. It just, they didn't have no water baptism to symbolize it. But the Lord added that to show you that Jesus is the one that paid the price to even give you this chance. And he's the one that instituted a new covenant. See, people say, well, we got the new covenant. We ain't got to keep the law. Look, if you read Hebrews 8, it tells you that the new covenant is still based on the same old laws. Matter of fact, it's even better. It's supposed to be in your mind now. Not written on stone, in your mind. So you know better. You don't even want to break it with your mind. Jesus told you that. He said, I know you heard it was said, don't commit adultery. I tell you, if you look at a woman and you lusting after this man, wife, do you look lusting after this woman, you commit adultery already in your mind. He tells you, it's supposed to be right here. Not just not do it. Don't even think about doing it. I had an argument with a brother about that. He said, you trying to tell me I sin if I go in the store and I think about stealing that leather coat, but I don't steal it. Did I sin? I said, yeah. It's good you didn't steal it, but you still, you shouldn't even think foolishness like that. But that's what Jesus said, didn't he? If you look at a woman and lust out there, you done done it, right? But now, what verse you at? 28. Go ahead. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. See, this person going to live because he considered and said, look, I was doing wrong. I was really tripping bad. And he turned away from his transgression. He said, that's going to save him. He shall surely live and not die. 29. Yes, said the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Uh -huh. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. See, he used the same word Peter used in Acts 2. See, repentance always been around. See, that's really what the baptism is about, brothers and sisters. It's showing you repentant. That's why he said here at the end of verse 30, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. That's why the title is not just the baptism. It's the baptism and the walk that follows. Because that's where repentance come in at. Don't nobody want to talk about that part of it. It, ain't, it is not that Jesus did it all and we don't have nothing to do. Or else we wouldn't be hearing this type of language. We wouldn't be reading about repenting and turning away from our transgression. Verse 31. Cast away from you all your transgressions. That's your sins, which is breaking the law. Go ahead. Whereby ye have transgressed. Get rid of them. You used to do a whole lot. You lucky to even get away with that. That's the grace of God. Cast away from you your transgression whereby you have transgressed. Go ahead. And make a new heart. You know, you got to make you a new heart. You, that's it. That's the mind. That's the heart of the body is the mind. You got to make you a new mind. You got to get rid of all them filthy thoughts that you used to have and start having a different mindset. And that's what the spirit is doing for you. When you start getting the word in there, it'll push that garbage out. But that's what he's telling you, right? Mm -hmm. Repent. Turn yourself from your transgressions so iniquity won't be your ruin. Cast away your transgressions whereby you are transgressed and make you a new heart and a what? And a new spirit. Oh, see, this is what the spirit is about. You getting God's spirit and it's going to change your old no good spirit that's in your mind, that's in your head, the way you've been thinking. That's, that's what the spirit is. It's right here in your mind. You got to get God's spirit in there though. To get rid of you. That's why he said, make you a new spirit. Go ahead. And a new heart. Mm -hmm. For why will you die, O house of Israel? He said, why will you die? Why are you going to make me kill you? Go ahead. He's going to tell you again, 32. For I have no pleasure in the death of them that die. He said, I don't have no pleasure in the death of him that died. Go ahead. Say it the Lord God. Uh, so do me a favor. What? Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. He said, turn yourselves and live so I don't have to kill you. Now, go to uh, uh, Matthew 3. And we're going to see if the New Testament tell you anything different. He made it clear you got to make a change. You got to repent, he said. Get rid of your transgression. See, now John the Baptist, he introduced the individual baptism, but it's the same old principle. Matthew 3 and 1. Matthew 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Now John the Baptist came preaching. He the one introduced Jesus on the scene. 
But he came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. What was he preaching? Go ahead. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You mean he said repent too, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Everybody got the same doctrine in the Bible. They teaching the same thing. And too many preachers made people think you don't have to do nothing. Jesus did it all and that's it. That's the, one of the biggest lies men told. That's straight from Satan to have you thinking you okay when you all messed up. He said repent, didn't he? Repent ye for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means you're going to change from what you've been doing to something else. And we know the criteria is the holy law. Sin is breaking the law. If I got to repent from sin, that means I got to repent from breaking the law and start observing it. That's why we're here on the seventh day. We can all be doing something else. We can all be having a good time and doing something else, but the, Bible, the law said keep the seventh day holy. Remember it to keep it holy. It also say have a holy convocation on this day. But now, skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about of Jordan. Now they went out to John. He was out there preaching, repent, and the people started listening. They started going out to him. And what did he do? And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. And they started getting baptized. But John had a message. He didn't just dip people in water, did he? His message was repent, wasn't it? We saw that. And he's going to make it clear what he mean by that. Verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. See, now some of the religious leaders, see, they always go where the crowd is. They saw the crowd going out there with John. They said, let's see, let's see what's going on out here. They came out there, just like you got a lot of false prophets now. And the more people start listening to us, they're going to be hovering around, seeing what's going on. But John didn't pull no punches with them. He said, oh, you generation of vipers. He said, who have warned you to flee from the right? In other words, he said, what y'all doing out here? Because I know y'all been running game. So let me just warn you right now. Don't come out here with that old garbage you've been lying to people with. He said, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You better do what? Verse 8. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. He's still preaching repentance. He's baptizing people, telling them they got to change their ways. Bring forth fruit, meat for repentance. Your actions should prove that you really have changed. Because you can say anything with your mouth. Bring forth fruit, meat or worthy of repentance. Go ahead. Verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves. Boy, John had it covered. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't even give you a chance to get the lie out your mouth. He had it covered. Just like we ready but when people, before they even tell a lie, we ready for them. That, they don't even know where the scripture is that they're going to use to back up the lie. And we have to tell them where it is. They say, well, you know, I don't know where it is. I think it's, a, it's talk about, y'all, Romans six fourteen. You ain't under law but under grace. That don't mean what you think. See, we have to tell them in advance. But John was ready for them to come up with their little line. He said, Think not to say within yourselves, you know, we children of Abraham, so I don't have to worry about it. Go ahead. We have Abraham to our father. Uh -huh. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He said, look, God don't need you. Don't tell me that line because that ain't going to work with me. Go ahead. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. He said the axe is at the root of the tree. You either do or you're going to be in trouble. Go ahead. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Uh -huh. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. Uh -huh. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, John was baptizing people, telling them to repent, and he was telling them that Jesus was the one who really was going to settle the matter. Jesus is the one you really got to believe in, but he, was, he still preached the message. Of repentance. Go ahead. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garden. Uh -huh. But what are they going to do with the ones that don't want to change? Go ahead. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Unquenchable fire. See, John let him know the whole story. But now, go to Romans 10. So with all this evidence that you got to get baptized and you got to walk with God from then on, why is it that people believe that when you come to Jesus, you really don't got to do nothing? You know, you go to some churches now, they just have a, a praise festival. 
I done been there. And they said, look, oh, we just come to pray. They make you feel embarrassed if you don't feel like getting up, jumping, and shouting. They make you feel like you embarrassed. They tell you, I don't know what you come to do, but we come to praise them. We're going to praise them today. Praising is good. It got its place, but it don't mean nothing if you ain't doing what you're supposed to do. People talk about prayer answers all things. Prayer cannot answer all things if you're not doing what you're supposed to do. He tells you in Proverbs 28 verse 9, if you turn your ear away from the law, even your prayer is abomination. So prayer can't answer all things, can it? But people want to use little cliches like that, but don't want to do what God is saying. And this one of the scriptures, one of the favorite one line is that people like to read. You know, preachers be on TV using this. Uh, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Just call on him right now. Repeat this after me. And he gave him a little spiel. Then he said, now you saved. Put your hand on the TV. You saved now. That's not what the Bible is teaching. We're going to read this one line that they like, but we're going to read some other lines to see exactly what it's saying. Romans 10 and 13. This is why people don't are be believing that they don't have to do nothing because too many preachers have told them that. 10 and 13, go ahead. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, now that's a good one, isn't it? And it sounds good, but it's easily taken out of context, brothers and sisters. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, they will run, they will take that and run with it. All you got to do is call on the Lord. Isn't that what it said? All you just call on, just call on. Just call. That's all you got to do. It didn't say that, first of all. It didn't say all you got to do is call them, did it? That's you adding to the word of God. It did not say that. The emphasis is not on that's all you got to do. See, if you read a little further, he tells you that there's some prerequisites to this thing anyway. He tells you how can you call unless you heard and believe. And we know all over the Bible, once you hear something, you got to not just be a hearer of the word, but what? A doer. a doer of the word. See, we got all those scriptures to back it up. So it cannot be all I got to do is call. And, and Paul didn't say all I got to do is call, did he? Nope. But see, he's not even going that route with it. But preachers take it that route. Well, what route, what is Paul really talking about? I'm going to show you. Paul said in verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, the emphasis was simply on whosoever. That's what it was. It wasn't on all I got to do is call. It was on whoever you are. You have access to this thing. That's what he was really focusing on. Whosoever was the emphasis. You know what that means? That means whoever you are, whether you are Jew or Gentile, whether you black or white, Green or yellow, it don't matter. Everybody got the opportunity. That's what it is. Now, to get saved, it's going to take more than you simply call it. That's understood in other verses, right? But that's what the emphasis is on, whosoever. He wasn't talking about that's all you got to do, but back up and read verse 12 because it leads into it and it shows you really what, what he was going after. He wasn't talking about all you got to do. He, he got too many other verses that, you know, you got to keep the law. Go ahead, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Oh, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. See, that's the whosoever. See, because the Jews were trying to say that the Greeks didn't have a chance at this thing. Like I know some Israelite brothers now, to this day, they want to kill all white people. Why? Oh, they, oh no, they, they don't got no chance. Look, Paul killing that right here. This is what he's talking about. So the emphasis is not on all I got to do is call, is it? The emphasis is on whoever you are. You got the opportunity to get on board and, and, and call and get saved. But it ain't just calling because you got other scriptures letting you know the other things you got to do besides calling. That would be real simplistic. So that's why he said, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever, whosoever is referring to who? Whoever you are, the Jew, Greek, or whoever, right? That's what that's about. That's what his point was. His point was that's all you got to do is call. But that's what preachers take it out of context, don't they? Mm -hmm. But let's make sure. Let's listen to the words of Jesus because Jesus is the Savior, right? Uh, Luke 6 and 46. Let's listen to his words. 